Hallelujah. Come on into the sanctuary. Come on into the room. It is time to praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. What a privilege and an honor it is to be here, to be in the land of the living one more week, to be in the uh, mindset to come to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, looking to be fed from the Lord, looking to meet Him here in the sanctuary. You have a prime opportunity now. You can make this worship experience what you desire it to be. Hallelujah. It is all about your expectation. It's all about your uh, worship with your Lord. Hallelujah. We are just the platform and the instrument that is used um, to bring the services. We just the church, the house of the Lord that we have prepared. Hallelujah. With you in mind to have a worship experience. And it's time for us to be going to the house of the Lord, not as we always have, but going into the house of the Lord with an expectation to receive. Glory be to God, not thinking that we're just going to another place, hallelujah, like a place of business or another gathering, but we are literally coming before, hallelujah, the Lord, entering into his gates, with uh, and entering into his inner courts. Glory be to God. Coming before the king because he has allowed us to do so. So this is a privilege and it is an opportunity. Always make sure that you understand what you're doing when you set your feet toward the house of God. We are here and excited that you are here. God bless each and every one of you that is in um, underneath the sound of my voice and who have stopped by Kingdom Life Online Church Connection to worship the Lord with us. We invite you to come on in, get your hearts ready, get your mind ready, and most importantly, get prepared to hear from the Lord God. Not because of Pastor Betty, but because wherever two and three gather themselves together in His name, He already said that He would be right there in the midst of us. Isn't that great news? Oh, glory be to God. We are in the last Sunday, you all, of the year. Yes, it has been a very challenging, a very trying, a very strange year. But we're not going to end the note on a downward note. We're not going to end the note hopeless and uh, and etc. We're going to end uh, this, this year in a praise, in a... Uh, We're going to end this year on a good note. We're going to end it in, in a praise. We're going to end it in the upbeat. We're going to end it with uh, a hope, the audacity to hope, trusting and believing in the Lord God that he will come through for us. And we want you to move into 2021. And we want you to be intentional about 2021. I posted on Facebook a couple of days ago. We've got to be intentional. Uh, the times are requiring it. It is going to be beneficial to you to move forward um, uh, intentionally. Not getting up living life by chance. Not living life by the roll of the dice, I call it. Uh, just whatever happens, happens. But we're going to be living life intentionally. Glory be to God, because only those who do so are going to find themselves with results and is going to find themselves in this forward movement. So we are not going to be teaching today on the series that we've been in. We're going to put that on hold today only because we are uh, led to do so and we want to spend this last Sunday of the year uh, talking to you. We're going to talk a little bit about shifting of the gears, but not... The, the service is not going to be full-blown shifting of gears because we want to talk to you today about the faith word that the Holy Spirit gave me for Kingdom Life Christian Center. And for those of you who would come aboard and join that, who your spirits connect with this faith word. And we're going to show you the connection between the series we've been teaching, shifting of the gears, and how this is going to be crucial or a necessary uh, thing for us to do uh, to have the ability or the willingness to shift gears to evaluate where we are in our spiritual life so that we can shift in order for us to be uh, participants 
in the faith word that I received from the Lord today. We're going to give you that faith word. We don't know how the Holy Spirit is going to um, uh, interject that. Um, but we plan on doing it at the end of the broadcast, giving you that faith word for 2021. But if uh, it is a, um, if it flows as I'm teaching, then we'll give it that way as well. So when we've been talking about shifting the gears, this is part seven. How appropriate I said this is because the number seven is a, a very important number. It is the number of completion. And the number eight is the... Uh, number of new beginnings and so we want to complete in this uh, cycle that we've been in and we want to complete this series shifting the gears so that we can start brand new and fresh uh, for the new year so we're going to be taking the text in the sermon out of the book of second kings chapter 4 so if you got your bible or your mobile devices, whatever you are using to follow me in the Word of God, I encourage you guys to bring your Word and to bring your devices so that you can follow along with me. I am just that type of pastor. I love people to have the Word. I don't like them just sitting there looking. I want them to have their Bible with me to follow along as much as they can so they can be convinced that it's the Word of God that's saying what it is saying, what Pastor Betty is delivering. So welcome to all of you. Peace be unto all the saints of God. Thank you, Father, for another Sabbath day. Thank you for uh, brand new mercies and your faithfulness toward your people that you allow us to be in the land of the living. It's in you we live, in you we move, and in you we have our being. Thank you for the privilege of life and that gift of life. Thank you for allowing us to be here to see the last Sunday of the year. Father, we thank you that this service is dedicated to you. We hope you are pleased with what we offered unto you as a sacrifice of praise and of worship and that you are thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips so the word of God today will come forth with simplicity, with accuracy, with boldness and we come against every demonic foe that come against this word to hinder it from reaching the people that it needs to reach, from hindering it, from uh, coming over the airways. Uh, uninterrupted. Um, we thank you, Father, that we take charge of the airways in the name of Jesus, and we declare it to be so in Jesus' name. So we encourage you to go ahead and um, uh, cut off your TVs, um, turn off your mobile devices, stop checking your emails, put the dogs up in the cage. If you ha have to, um, try to eliminate every ounce of distraction, because guess what? I know it. It's coming for your attention to keep you from listening to the Word of God. Glory be to God. Put your children down. And those who are of age and can hear, don't send them in another room. Sit them right by you so that they can hear the Word of God as well. And let's go in. So we want to talk about the uh, shifting of the gears because the faith word that God give, uh, had given me, he says it's, an, it's important for them to get this concept first. Is that um, they, we have to go, everyone has to start, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves. If we examine ourselves, we won't have the need for others to examine us. Matter of fact, that's nobody's job. God has given nobody the assignment or the job to evaluate a person's personal life to, because none of us can know deeply all. If you're a prophet of God, he can reveal some things to you, but he's not going to reveal everything in regard to that person's life and so you know your inside better than anyone else know you know your you know what your thoughts are you know what your heart is saying you know the things that you don't speak that's inwardly inside of you you know your true character you know when you are authentic and when you're not so um, it says let a man examine himself to see if he if he is in the faith and so this lesson that God gave me about shifting the gears, this series um, that I got, uh, we using the natural illustration of a, of a vehicle and the gears that we use in order uh, to drive our car. And if you haven't listened to parts one through six, uh, we have laid all of the foundations and explained the foundational principles behind this lesson. So go back. So I'll be alluding to some of those things. If it don't make sense, go back to the other parts and I break them down uh, more uh, finely in the other parts. But we are going to uh, relate 
how a car and on the four gears work with a car and related to our lives being in those four gears. In life, things happen. We experience things. We experience setbacks. We experience times where we um, are in that mode of we don't know what else to do. Our flesh feel like it's giving up. We've been in that, that mode of I, I want to check out. I don't want to be um, on one side or another. We've been in the neutral zone. We've been in the parking uh, gear. When I say zone or mode and gear, I'm talking about the same thing. Um, we've been in that parking gear. We've been in that um, neutral gear. We also have been times where we've been in that reverse gear. We Now, in the other part, I can't remember what the part, um, shifting gears part it was, but we talked about the positive and the negative uh, of each of these gears. So go back and listen to that. But in the reverse, in the neutral, and in the parking, those are considered... I consider as adjustment gears, meaning that at some point in our lives, we come under attack, um, uh, we get uh, tested and tried, and we have the tendencies to get into those gears and to stay there. And when I heard the Spirit uh, tell me to teach on this subject, He says, it is time for you to tell my people it's time to shift. I said, Lord, they haven't heard that before from some more uh, prolific uh, teachers than me he said do what I tell you to do and so I'm doing that and so we get in those gears he said it is time for them and the time is now there's no time like the present for them to evaluate the gear that they're in currently and to um, analyze how long they've been there and has it been past God's timing so the car is designed to be in the driving gear that's the major purpose of a car is to be in the driving mode we we buy a car we spend all that money some of you got notes to prove it we buy that car to um, get us from point A to point B because where we need to go walking is not an option we you can walk to some places but there's some distances that you can't get to only by walking. If you did that, it would be very difficult, challenging, full of toil, stress, and some, some people body can't get there. So the vehicle has been made to get you to your destination uh, in a faster way, in a more efficient way. And so when we bought the car, the car is designed to drive. It is not designed to stay in the park, in the neutral, or in the reverse. Those are only options to help us to maneuver driving. When we get to the grocery store, we got to park. So we have to have the reverse to get back out of the parking. We have to have reverse in order to help us to adjust to traffic based off of other drivers and what they're doing. They may need us to back up so they can do what they need to do so we can keep traffic flowing. We need to park the car once we have gotten to our destinations and arrived back to where we started. We parked the car. Um, uh, waiting for our next trip. But if you take any car, whether it's a designer car, Lamborghini, Mercedes, a, a Benz, whatever that car is, you spent lots of money or you spend little money. Whatever that car is and you buy it, you could buy a new off the lot. But if you neglect that car and you sit that car in the parking, uh, in that parking gear, and don't allow that car to move for years, things begin to break down. I talked about that thing in part six. Things begin to break down, and I don't care how much you pay for it or how little you pay for it, it's not going to work properly. You're going to find yourself when you go to start that up, the, there may not be enough oil. The oil may have thickened and clogged. Uh, things have set. Obsolescence have uh, uh, crept in. And things are not working. Belts have not been running for years. And now they are not oiled enough, etc. And so the neglect caused a vehicle that has been designed to operate, bought, bought new. But if it's not utilized, it will come to obsolescence. It means it will suffer damage and it will suffer loss. And so the Lord said that in this series, you want, to, you want them to be honest and authentic. 
because the only that's the only thing that's going to get results people got when we start evaluating our own self we spent enough time evaluating other people pointing fingers at others seeing what they're doing wrong and, and pointing out their uh, shortcomings and their um, um, their sins or whatever and we have not spent enough time to see that as we are looking at them that things are falling apart in our own backyard and with our own selves and and this way let me just interject this this way of of holiness is a way of humbleness and we got way too many proud people in the body of Christ that's why we can't get things done because we've missed God we we have said God says stuff and he has not we have known we have made wrong decisions we have treated people wrong we have done things wrong and we will go years and some will even go to their grace without saying two simple words I'm sorry or I apologize, or I was wrong. Three simple words or two simple words, we can't put our mouths together because the sense of pride. We think that we, and we go on for years operating that way, and we stifling the extraordinary power of God that wants to work through our life because unforgiveness. The model prayer itself, I know I'm not even on the lesson yet, but it's all good. The model prayer says, forgive us our debts as we, forgive our debtors so you can't go to the father asking for forgiveness and asking for his mercy and he says if um if you don't forgive men and their trespasses neither would i forgive your trespasses if you want the father to forgive you he said you must also forgive others and we go on and we carry this stuff we pack it and it's packed down and before you know it, you forget that it's there and, and then you we want the supernatural to happen and we can't even humble ourselves to say that we were wrong. And now this way of shifting gears, you got to be true and you got to evaluate yourself in honesty. And and those who do so, God is willing and ready. He's already forgiven us of all of our sins. And, but he's really in, willing and ready to now pour out to you um, the extraordinary to do the things and the exploits of the kingdom of God when we get things in order. And so this way is humble. So he said when you're talking about shifting the gears, the reason people stay stuck is a, a few reasons. But one of them is the lack of knowledge. But another one is because they're too proud to say that they they missed it. Or oh, I'm, I'm this position I'm in this um, uh, place or I've been doing this for a long time and they think they're do because they're doing it in their own intellect and their own strength and they've been at it a long time that they have no area of learning left and when you find a person that is not willing to learn and think they know it all that's a dangerous person to be around because as long as we live as powerful as we get even in our maturation we're going to still be lifelong learners if you are a child of god you're a lifelong learner we have not graduated yet we are not done and finished until we leave the earth realm and until that time we're supposed to be lifelong learners the holy spirit corrects us he gets us in line if we allow him to lead us for he will lead us into all truth. And so he said when shifting of gears, they got to be honest of where they are. Because he said some of them have been stuck in some of the gears that's only supposed to have been an adjustment gear or an adjustment mode. They only were allowed to stay there for a short period of time and then to move on. But they have allowed the, the pressures of life. They have allowed the circumstances of life. They have allowed their own situations in life to get them stuck in a certain gear, not making any tractions, not moving further in this or in their course and in the race I have set before them. They were running superbly. You ran well, but what hindered and what inflected in and threw itself in your path that uh, hindered you from obeying my truth. And so what they have, because of the pressures of life, because things have been hard and challenging, especially in 2020, they're losing their faith. They're, they don't have the audacity to hope. They're, the faith, if they haven't lost the faith, the faith is wavering. 
uh, they're paying attention more to what things and dick and the uh, elements and news reports and everything is dictating to them instead of keeping their focus on me so when we talked initially in this series we talked about the shifting of different areas and let me get that for you all real quick like i said i'm not going to go into all of this today i want to finish up with the shootamite woman in, in kings so turn their kings for but we uh, these are the areas that he says it's time for us to shift shift our focus shift our paradigm shift the direction shift our agendas and shift our uh, emphasis and shift our priorities there's a shift that is needed in the body of christ in regarding these areas he said that the outcome when they shift is going to be great so in this biblical stories that i'm sharing with you all and the scripture reference i'm taking you all to i'm taking you here to attempt to bring out the the following points what is the outcome when I'm shifting in my appropriate time? What is the outcome when I'm shifting with delay? What is the outcome when I am shifting without delay? Or when I am just in, in the stuck mode? Glory be to God. And so we understand life happens. There, there are interruptions that come in and reflect on us. But what do we do when these things happen? We have to make sure that we are examining and determining what our focus should be at any specific time because there are going to be a lot of distractions that's coming when you are full force ahead in the driving mode going forward you at the appropriate speed man you are making um huge stride strides towards your purpose your, your vision you're attentive to your vision and man, and the enemy knows and you're a focus truly ahead. You don't look up to the left or to the right what's going on. But because you're so involved in pleasing the Father and making sure you feel your assignment here in this earth, you are making traction. But what happens? Here go these flags. It knows what you like. It knows what will get you distracted. And bam, before you know it, here it is. And then you find yourself off focus. So when... Um, you are destined with these life interruptions. Make sure that your focus is shifted at, uh, in the right direction at a specific time. Identify those distractions, the things that distract you the most when you're getting on track and what comes in and how that looks. And it comes sometimes in the same form. Use different things and different vehicles, but it's the same type of distraction. Um, and then determine if you are spending time on things that point you back to what you were called to do and your passion and your calling. Or if you are spending time on things that has no direct relation to what God called you to do. And so he said it's time for them truly to shift their focus. They've been focusing on the wrong thing. Will they dare to believe me above believing anything else? Would they dare to believe my report, to believe the report of the Lord over and above every other report? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as we are looking at this story about the Shudamite woman, I want you to take notice of these things. Let's go there real quickly. Glory be to God. I'm hoping to finish this expeditiously. Hallelujah. As I'm reading, sometimes I get a lot of different thoughts and I'm going to start try to stay on tack. I want you to see the driving gear or the driving mode that the Shudamite woman was in. We talked in earlier parts also about even in the driving mode, you have to be careful because the driving mode, which was the designated mode for the car to operate or your life to operate, was supposed to be in the forward movement, driving, making traction toward your destiny. Um, that sometimes even in the driving mode and you making movement, you can be at an accelerated speed that is not conducive to where the Holy Spirit wants you to be. You could be moving so fast that you're moving ahead of him, skipping processes and not listening to his voice, making foolish decisions along the way. Yes, his grace is sufficient. Yes, he's going to get you up out of it. But you have went a long way around and now you have lost some time. You, you could have been ahead of time, but you didn't listen 
at your assistant. You didn't listen at your helper. You didn't listen at the that the of the Holy Spirit who is the one who will guide you into all truth, never lead you into error. And yes, you had to some costly um uh, repercussions because you went that way. You're going to come out still on top, but you suffered something that you didn't have to suffer because of your choice, because you went ahead of the Holy Spirit voice. He was trying to tell you how you were moving too fast. You're not doing your due diligence. Don't sign on that dotted line yet. Uh, don't say that yet. Don't release that yet. Don't go there yet. And we went ahead of him. Or we've been too slow. He said, now you all are too slow. I've told you to do that three weeks ago or three months ago. And that's what we talked about in being in the reversing gear. Talking about positive. Uh, being in the positive mode of each of those. So in the reverse, you normally shouldn't be in that reverse mode. Because to me, I relate the reverse mode into the backsliding mode. But the reverse is there, as we said, to make minor adjustments. And when you are in the reverse mode and you, with your spiritual life, you're supposed to only be there to go back and to and reverse and go back to revisit the things that you have not attended to that the Holy Spirit originally told you to do. Glory be to God. So let's look at the mode that the Shudamite woman was in. And let's get some principles by this example. Amen. Glory be to God. So I hope that you guys are there already. In 2 Kings chapter number 4. And we are going to start reading uh, on um, verse 8. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed to um, Shunan, where a great woman, and she constrained, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. Now Elijah is the prophet of God. And now he's passing um, in the scriptures ahead. He just performed a miracle for this widow woman um, of one of the, the servants of his. And um, he told her what to do. Her debts were paid. The creditors didn't come and take her sons away. And now he's passing through Shunin. Shunim. Where he has uh, came in to contact with this great woman. When they talk about a woman, that means she was influential. She was a, a, a woman of notoriety. And, and you most definitely, I'm assuming that she had money. Yep. And so, and she constrained him. That means she compelled him um, to come and to eat bread in her house. Because she saw him coming past. I... And she had to have a spiritual discernment to understand who Elijah was. This is a man of God, and you'll see later. She constrained him to eat bread, and so it was as often. It said as often, O-F-T, meaning as often as he passed by, he then turned in thither to eat his bread. So as he kept passing by the woman's house, she was compelled to feed him. And there's a, there's a great lesson in that. You, if you receive the prophet, give a prophet a glass of water in the name of the prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. So now he's stopping by as often as he's coming past her way. He's stopping by her house to eat. Okay. And now in verse number nine, and she said unto her husband, behold, now I perceive, you see that word perceive, she perceived who this person was. This is just not a normal man, but I perceive, I have insight. It, I, I have become aware that this man that's keep passing by, it's, it's an anointing on him. This is a prophet of God. Glory be to God. That this is a holy man of God, which passed by us continually. He's going back and forth. And so she was compelled in her heart to do what verse 10 says. She says to her husband, Come on, let us make a little chamber, I pray you, on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he come to us, that he shall turn in to us. So she wasn't satisfied with just giving him um, food to eat. Now she says, let's make a chamber so that he can stop here and rest. Man, this, she... I believe that she was precursing 
uh, her miracle that was about to happen that we're going to discover later. So she is providing for the men of God. You can never go wrong <clears throat> when you provide for a prophet, a true prophet of God. So, <clears throat> so she said, let us make him a chamber on the housetop and put there for him this these tools that's necessary. He's going to have a place to rest. He's going to have a table where he can eat. He's going to have a chair where he can sit at. And then he's going to have a lamp in the house that he can see. She didn't do it halfway. She did the whole caboodle, as they say. And so, and he can go up and then he can rest when he needs to rest. Now let's go down to verse 11. And it fell on the day that he came uh, thither and he turned into the chamber and he lay down there. So now Elijah is taking his rest. Verse 12. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, <clears throat> she stood before him. So when you are serving, I spent most of my time uh, growing up in the church before God called me to a leadership position. I always served my local church in some type of capacity. I was determined to not be a hindrance to any ministry I went to. I wanted to be a blessing. All the time it was not uh, um, embraced or, or looked at in the way I was giving it out. But I did it because I knew the God that sees in secret rewards openly. And to this day, I believe that the, some of the blessings that I am uh, experiencing now that I'm in leadership positions because of the seed I sown of service. I didn't get paid, never was paid. I was never on any payroll. I, I gave of my services. I, I was in one paid position, but that was had nothing to do with my service to the local ministry. It was a, a specific job. But anyway, and so uh, now uh, he sees all that she's doing for him. And now he says, something needs to be done for this woman. Uh, if you sow seed, you will receive a harvest. That's why it's important how, uh, how and what you sow. Because the law, the predictable consequence of an act, like gravity, what goes up must come down. The law of seed time and harvest, you sow a seed, it is guaranteed, it's predictable, it's going to always happen the same, that the seed is going to produce a plant. What type of seed do you have? Okay, so anyway, she has planted seed. Now it is time for harvest. So the man of God is um, compelled to ask this woman, what does she want? She needs a blessing now because that law needs to be put in place. She's taken well care of me, good care of me. She's provided all this and I didn't even ask her to. She wasn't even required to do this. She perceived I was a man of God, watched me come and pass, saw a knee, sold the seed of the chamber and feeding me, making sure I was taken care of. And now I want to know what she wants. Look at verse 12. Called her. Called the Shunammite. And he called her. She stood before him. Verse 13. He said unto, and he said unto him, Say to her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us, meaning you have taken a stake in reverentry, serving and having true, authentic concern for me. Um, and you have done it with care. What is to be done for thee? He's asking her a question. In other words, almost like she had a blank check. What you want? <laughs> I told a message to her on the blank check. But anyway, would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? So he's, in other words, he's trying to get her connected with influential people. Do you want me to let the king know of this great, wonderful service that you've done to me? Okay. And she answered, I dwell among my own people. She was content. No, I'm putting some of my words in here. No, uh, prophet, it's, it's no need. I did this out of my heart. I don't need to be bought before anybody and shown what I did. Uh, I did it out of concern and out of passion. I don't need to be have any special privileges extended to me. I don't need to get in the king graces. You know, we got a lot of people seeking that being in the inner circle, getting into the good graces of someone else, thinking that their their next ticket or their next uh, a step of elevation comes through man. And I'm not negating 
the importance of the power of association. It is about who you know and who you be around, but God gives us those connections for a learning opportunity, give us for the download and the impartation. But when we find people who are just seeking the personality, seeking the person and not seeking what they have on them, like Elijah was uh, uh, serving Elijah, he wanted the anointing, not so much as being in good graces with Elijah. And it's no uh, harm in you wanting to be on good terms with people that are influential or power and to know them. But when you are seeking that of it, when you are just doing it with that motive to say, I'm connected to them to get you to your next level, then, then that's what you're going to receive. And when that's why when flesh falls... And in the church or in any other arena and people who were hung up on flesh, they fall right with them. Hallelujah. You want to build your hope on the thing that is firm and sure. That was just a side uh, nugget. But anyway, she said, no, I dwell among my own people. I'm all good. That, In other words, that's what she's saying. And they are sufficient enough for me. I don't need no place in the king's palace. I want to abide right where I'm at. So anyway, verse 14 says, and he said... What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she has no child, and her husband is old. So now Gehazi, the servant, has recognized a need in the woman's life. Although she didn't speak it, I see, and I evaluated, and I looked around. She has a lot of possessions. She has a husband, but neither one of them have a child. But here's the thing. Her husband is old. <laughs> so if he was old, she probably was uh, well aged as well. And so, uh, then we go down in verse 15, and he said, call her now. So we have identified a need in her life. And when you take care of God's business, when you get in the right mode, driving uh, uh, forth in that driving gear, attending to the things of God, attending to your assignment, attending to the vision and the purpose that he got for you and you alone, not looking at anybody else's race and how far ahead of them uh, of you, you think they are, or how far behind they are, but keeping your eyes on the prize, keeping your eyes on Jesus, and why he called you to this work, and what he called you to do, and when you stay fully focused like that, glory be to God, your blessing is on the way, and he said, now call her, and when he had called her, uh, she stood in the door, and so, although her husband was old, that was not even, uh, a consideration see age and time guys is not a god of time neither of age he could do what he wants to do when he wants to do it and i know a lot of you whoever i'm talking to in this fit a lot of you think that time has went on you're getting older and some blessing has not manifested in your life yet and you have given up you have said god has forgotten about you but if you stay stuck with your mindset in that time era and in that age era you will miss out you are not done. It is not over until God says it's over. What he has for you is for you. The appropriate time for the manifestation of the thing that he has for you is going to be uh, bring you great joy. You're going to be glad you waited. You're going to be glad you didn't take shortcuts and, and, and you didn't settle for things that God wanted to give you the best. And then it is great to have more of a quality than it is quantity. And people think that the longer I'm in something and been with something, the better. But there have been people been in long-time relationships, long-time partnerships in, in the marketplace, etc. And it's been full of toil and headaches and all kinds of things. They ha And I remember even looking for uh, the building that I own. I was about to settle until the Holy Spirit said, why are you settling um, and you got to do all this adjustment, put stuff in storage when I could give you the best. And I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. And I was so glad that I waited. But we think that God's forgotten about us, but he got a plan ahead. The thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11 is my favorite. The thoughts and the plans that I have taught you, said the Lord, are not of evil. They are of good. They, I got an expected end, but there's process. I don't need you to miss this process because where I got the end for you, you're going to have to have the tools and the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom in that process. But if I show you the end and let you get to the end when you want to, you'll skip over processes. You'll skip over 
of those key uh, uh, growth uh, opportunities, if you will. And then when you get there, you'll be ill-equipped. But anyway, here is now, her husband is old. That is not even a component with the man of God. So here we go. And he says, she's standing in the door. Verse 16, and he said about this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, nay, no, my Lord, thou man of God, don't lie to me unto thy handmaid. In other words, how did you know I had a desire? I'm old. My, 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 my husband, he can't produce seed. I mean, he's past that age. I'm past this age. Don't be playing, and I'm putting words in here. Don't be playing around my emotions. Please, man of God. Now, I believed in you. I knew you was a man of God. Don't lie to me now. I, I, I put my faith and trust in you that you was true, authentic. Now, don't lie to me. Because why? What, what he had said is going to happen for her seemed impossible. So, she had almost gotten into, she did. She, in her life, she's gotten to, so not, uh, uh, symbolically, she got into that parked gear. She's parked her dream. She's she's given up on it. She's 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 not. Uh, she's parked and and neutral to the fact that she can have a child. That dream has passed me by because of the reason intellectually and and through rationale reasoning and through um, uh, human reasoning. This is impossible. So I done parked that dream. And now you telling me uh, it's time to come out of that parking gear. I'm about to have a baby. Don't lie to me, please. <laughs> I can see her saying that. Don't lie to me. And then look at verse 17. So when you're sowing, expect to receive. Don't box God in. Don't tell him what is impossible. Don't say, Lord, I don't have that education to do that. I didn't come from this, this pedigree. I didn't. I wasn't raised that way. I didn't have this opportunity. And da 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 I'm trying to disqualify myself all the time of why we should not be a recipient of the blessing that God so want to give to his children. Hallelujah. And the woman conceived and she bare a son at that season that Elijah said, Right, see a true authentic prophet is precise, give timelines, and it comes to pass. And about that season, Elijah said to her, according to the time of life, and let's go down. And when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his father, to the reaper. So he going out where they're reaping the harvest. And he said unto his father, my head. So his head is hurting my head. He said it twice. And then, and he said to his, to the lad, um, go ahead and carry the child back to his mother. He's not feeling well, in other words. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, um, the lad sat on her knees till noon. That means he was really in pain. And the lad now dies in his mother's lap. Her promise of the man of God saying, she said, don't lie to me. Now the promise has come. Now the promise is laying dead in my lap. And some of you, you, you feel like that. God, the preachers, Pastor Betty, uh, is one of them this telling me the promises of God are yes and amen. They're telling me all the promises that God has for us. What's for us is for us. And to believe God and to trust in him. Have faith that you can uh, have whatsoever things you ask. And now that promise, I believe them. I trusted in that word. And now that same promise that he gave me and I partook of it. And it came into my life. Now uh, that thing seems to die. My, my, I got the, the business, but now my business is folding. I got my ministry, and now my ministry seems to not be able to meet its budget. I don't have the people in place. They, the ministry has gone through some challenges. We have gone through a, a slew of people going outward, revolving doors, and, and whatever the name is. We have been denied grants and been denied property and zoning. and, and Or I started... Uh, attending to my vision I moved on what God told me to do I got there had some success and now where I'm at right now the blessing that was a blessing now seems to be drying up the land seems to be dry it is laying dead in my lap right in front of my face in uh, what I'm looking at now is death of my vision death of my dreams 
depth of my hope. I put all that I had in this and then the pandemic come. And now all of my hard earned investment that I put in my business, that I put in this endeavor has now gone down the drain. That's what the devil tell you. Your vision has died. And I speak to you, to me, and to everybody who would dare to accept this. Whatever has died and you have lost in your life, that's going to lead me to my faith word for 2021. That's why I'm bringing this message. You got to shift your paradigm, your model of thinking. You got to shift your focus. You got to shift what you've been putting emphasis on. And that emphasis you've been placing is the loss that you have uh, taken. The devil wants you to stay there so he can get you right back into that neutral and parking gear when you have just got back into the right uh, gear and that's the driving gear. He wants to so stop your progress. He wants to stop your acceleration. He wants to stop you from believing. Stop you from having the audacity to hope. Stopping you from rising above it all. Glory be to God. And so here her blessing lies dead in her lap. But I want y'all to see something. She was in the driving gear. Glory. Stay there when you got the fight. If you got the fight to stay there. you <laughs> Let me take these glasses off. If you got the fight to stay there. Um, fight the good fight. Because you're going to lay hold. You're going to grab a hold to eternal life. Eternal life is not just in heaven. Eternal life is the God type of life. You're going to grab hold to this life. And you're going to... Uh, um, you're going to operate that life here in this earth as well as when we get to heaven. But look at what happened. Come on, you all. Go with me. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She is starting to operate with what's in her belief system. I know what's in front of me is facts. But I'm going to take what I know, what I've experienced. That I couldn't have a child. The man of God said I was going to. And it happened. That I have put seed in the ground. This was my blessing and promise to me. And now I see what the facts are saying. But I'm going to override the facts with the truth. That this is my blessing. And that the, that he had promised that I was going to have this son. He didn't just give this son to me to just to take him away. Who shout out a glory to God. Hallelujah. God did not bring you people of God this far just to leave you. Come on, said with it. He wouldn't have bought me this far just to leave me. He wouldn't have made a way from the beginning if he didn't care. He wouldn't have given me life if he didn't love me. He wouldn't lift me up to just cast me down. And so she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Of all places, she could have laid him in her house. She said, nope, I know where to go to receive the blessing. The man of God carried anointing. See, always remember that the men and women of God are vessels by which the Holy Spirit flow throughs and use as a conduit to administer healing, etc. But never look to any flesh because at the end of the day, it is the God Almighty who's doing the work and he's doing it through that vessel because the vessel has yielded itself to the Lord and to be used as the prophet like is in this place that the power of God flows through and our vocal cords are his. So that's why it's important to follow those who are following Christ. Follow me, Paul said, as I follow Christ. But here she is moving in faith, moving in her conviction, moving and placing her child in a place where she knows life can be restored. Hallelujah. So now she's put him in there and she shut the door upon him and she went out. And it's a lot that I saw in that shutting that door behind her. Don't doubt. No, none of y'all going in there viewing. Oh, the child. No, I'm shutting the door and I'm going to find the man of God. Glory be God. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses. I am on um, I am on a journey. I am on a conquest. I got things to go do. And I got to get to the man of God. Send me what I need. Send me a young man to drive. Send me the ass. That I may run. You see what it said? Run to the man of God and come again. So she said, I'm going to get him and I'm coming back. Oh, my, 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 my. I see a lot in there. Come on, keep moving, Pastor Betty. Because I see a lot. Glory. Hallelujah. And verse 23 said, and he said, wherefore will you go to him this day? Why are you going up there? It is neither new moon, neither is this the Sabbath day. 
And she said, it shall be well. Come on. Can you say with me somebody who is struggling, thinking that it's not well? Say it with me. It shall be or it is well. Everything is going to be all right. I have looked at the facts long enough, been staring at them, and it ain't changed my circumstances, not one iota. Now I'm shifting my focus. I'm shifting my paradigm. The model that I have set up in my mind that has not been in alignment with the word and, and my eyes have not been seen through the lenses of the word, but been seen through the lenses of the economy, lenses of my situation, and lenses of the facts. I got to bring myself down. Glory be to God. And I got to refocus, rethink, set new priorities. And I got to shift out of this neutral gear I got myself in. That all I feel like doing during this time is checking out. Going to bed, pulling the covers over my head, and just surviving. You're not just supposed to survive. That's good that we are surviving. But we are supposed to be overcoming. Victorious. And she said, it shall be well. Or it will be all right. And verse 24, then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, drive. You see that gear? That's the gear I want you all to be in moving into 2021. I don't want you to wait to January 1st. I want you to shift your gear right now. Come on, do it in the spirit. Shift. Uh, shift that gear out of park. Shift that gear out of reverse. Shift it out of neutral. Get into the parking because it's time for you to know. It's time to put acceleration on. The urgency of the hour is calling for us. We're not going to move ahead of the Holy Spirit, but we ain't got four and five years to do stuff. It is time for us to do it now. The Holy Spirit has been waiting on those who dare to believe that they can do it, that the exploits belongs to us, that the extraordinary uh, it's supposed to happen through our lives and through the lives of the body of Christ. Glory be to God. And so she got into the proper gear, into the drive mode. Move out of my way. In other words, I got somewhere to go. I got an urgent need and I don't need delay. I don't need you to be driving at 10 miles an hour. Put the uh, your feet on. They didn't have cars then, but put your feet on the metal. Dry at the speed because now I'm underneath the the um the direction of the holy spirit and he told me that i'm at the right speed move fast and i'm going to get to my destination safe you got to know when you're moving too slow you got to know when you're moving ahead of him the the key in this is balance knowing where you're supposed to be at what time how long you've been in the wrong gear and when you get into the driving gear you got to be uh um balance and not move ahead too fast and not be too slow we got to be right on time and they used to say he may not come when you want him but he's right on time glory be to god but we got to understand the timing of god glory be to god so look so drive go forward which way were they going drive and go forward and some of you are in the driving mode but you're headed in the wrong direction you got fervor you got uh, uh aggressiveness you are moving ahead you're doing some things but you're not going into the right direction turn around the holy spirit is nudging you your gps God pointing system is telling you, you have not gotten on the road that I told you to go on. You've gotten down your own strength. You've gotten down to your own ability, how you think it should work. And if you're going to want me to lead you, I'll lead you. But if you want to be led by your flesh, then you're going to go ahead. And what, and your outcome, you know what that's going to be. Those that walk out of the spirit, they will reap life everlasting. You walk out the flesh, you're going to reap the things of the flesh. And so she said, now drive, move. Don't you stop. Don't you slow down. Don't you slacken your pace uh, for me unless I tell you to do so. Don't worry how fast you're moving and whether I'm, my, I'm seat belted in. Glory be to God. You got people that you're trying to carry and they ain't ready for the ride. You, 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 better, you better adjust that glory be to God because you got somewhere to go. You got places to go and things to do for the Lord. So when she went and came to the man of God, to the Mount Carmel, it came to pass that the man of God saw her. He saw her from afar off 
And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder, there go that Shunammite woman. He knew that the way she was coming, I believe, that she's coming up here and she's not coming for nothing. She got the knee, a knee. And so he said, Now run, servant, go, I pray you, meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, Come on, y'all, I want y'all to focus on this verse. 24 and 26, and she answered him, it is well. Now y'all know the situation that she just left at home, the facts. A dead son waiting for him in his chambers. And he's asking, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? So it was well with her and her husband, but not for her child. But her answer was so profound. It is well. Would you dare to do that? Would you confess right now with Pastor Betty? I'm, I'm somewhere there. I, everything ain't going 100% perfect for Pastor Betty because I'm a pastor. No. I got to fight this thing. I got to do what I'm teaching y'all to do. Because also most of the time the message is to the messenger first before it gets to you all. All of us have need. And everything ain't 100% perfect. Would you dare join with me in this power confession? Shifting our focus and shifting how we thinking, our paradigm, our pattern of thoughts, and, and bringing it into the alignment to the Word of God. Casting down all those imaginations and things that telling us, this is the same old, same old, ain't nothing going to be different. You ain't going to, come on, say it is well. You said, but it's not well, Pastor Betty, in my home. It's not well with my marriage. It's not well on my job. It's not well with my finances. My bank account is not feeling healthy right now. Uh, my 401k has been depleted. And and um, my it's not well with my business. It's not marriage with my relationship with my children. And you and the continue on. But would you make the confession? The devil is going to tell you you're lying. Don't say that. You won't have to give an account for every lie. Call things that be not as though they were power uh, of life and death is lying in your tongue. Speak your powerful confessions. And I know a lot of people don't believe this. Confess it, believe it, and receive it. But the word is telling us. <laughs> the, the logos is, is very powerful. But it is so much power for the rhema or the or even the spoken word of God. Gee, the Lord was a sp made speaking spirit. We to bring things into existence, you got to speak it. That's what the confession thing is all about. It's nothing new. We put a new, new name on it, but confession and speaking the word of God, the earth was formed by the spoken word. Glory be to God. He said. He said, let there be, and there was. He spoke. He could have just like, I'm God, I'm just thinking it to be. No, he said, let there be like, let the weak, what? Say they're strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, right? Hallelujah. And so, she said, it is well. Can you say it with me? That's at the count of three. Glory. In the name of Jesus, when we speak this, Lord, help us to believe it. Say it with passion and conviction. One, two, three. It is well. I know the doctor said cancer. I know the doctor have said, have given up on you. I know the, the diagnosis. I know that the the, the the judge has says no. No more second chances. I know that uh, the creditor said, we're coming for you just like the other woman that the prophet blessed. The creditor is coming for my sons because I cannot pay my bills. My husband is dead. He said, go borrow vessels. And he says, and, and they're going to be filled. And and when she didn't have any more vessels to fill up, the oil stayed. You know, oil was very uh, lucrative. It was well. And she had enough. He said, now go. And I, these have been supernaturally, supernaturally filled. Now you have enough, go pay your debt off for you and your sons, and whatever you have left over, live on the rest. And guess what happened? Because she believed it and confessed it, it was so. The impossible came a possibility. And this woman is in the driving gear. She says, I'm not staying stuck. I need to move. I need to go to where the answer is at. And that is in the uh, uh, the, the word of God that's coming through the man of the prophet of God. And now she said, it is well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she called him by the feet, but 
He hates that I came near to thrust her away. She, she, he's like, move, don't, don't, don't be doing this to the man of God. She was thankful. She was in thankful mode. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, when you get into the right gear, the people you've been hanging around, and your confessions is changing, and you, are, you, you will stand, uh, keeping them company in the parking gear. They refuse to to uh, move, they want to stay comfortable there, be in their pity party, don't want to grow up, they stand in the neutral gear uh, of um, unbiased opinion and and um, just, just not for anything one way or another, and you leave them and you say, I have shifted, my life is shifting, Pastor Betty told me it's time to shift, I didn't even realize I was staying there, I didn't realize that I was in the wrong gear, and I went into that evaluation more honestly with my own self i came face to face in the mirror with me and i found out that i was not i'm not in the driving gear and i'm making the decision after 2020 this old messed up year uh i know with the lord there is no lost time but i got some i got some traction i got things to do places to go Things to manifest in my life. And I ain't got time for people who don't believe the word of God. Who don't think it's relevant. I don't care if y'all don't believe it. It don't make it null. It doesn't nullify the word of God. Let every man be a liar and God be true. Whatever he said, it's going to come to pass. Whether you believe it or not. Whether you even believe in him or not. You are the one that is going to suffer for that. But what he says is true and so when you are going to leave people are going to fling you away she he the, the servant is telling her get away from the master and then look what Elijah said and the man of god in verse 27 said let her alone glory be to god <laughs> let her alone for her soul is vexed within her and the lord had hid it from me i don't even know what her issue is i know i'm a man of god god reveals a lot of things to me but right now why her soul is vexed i don't really know right now and so and so she said uh he said leave her alone let her give me her claim and um she and god has not told it to me and uh, as leaders don't be a know-it-all. If God ain't spoken to you, don't tell people God told me to tell you. When they ask your opinion and say, Pastor, I need leading the guy, and God hasn't spoken to you specifically about they, that person's position. If you got to say, give me some time, let me pray on it, come back, and I'll give you the word. Don't give a word because you think you need to because you're a leader. And and don't say what God says and get people into the into a gear and driving in the wrong direction, and then they get there and suffer ruin. He says, God haven't revealed this unto me, and I know my gift that doesn't diminish who I am, but God has not revealed why she's vexed right now. And so then she said, did I desire a son of you, my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Remember I told you, man, God, don't lie to me, but now I got my son. And then now look at what happened. Then verse 29 says, and then he said to Gehazi, gird up your loin and take my staff in your hand, go thy way. If you meet any man, don't salute them. Don't even take time out to say hi. Uh, and if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord living and as thy soul living, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child still has not awakened. Glory be to God. See, the devil will test you. Uh, okay, I did what they said do. It still ain't happened. I gave that seed that they told me that I would get a blessing off of. Nothing didn't happen. I give him my tithes. I, I went and sacrificed. That ain't and nothing happened. I did what the man and woman of God said. Pray for my, pray for my husband, although he's got the devil in him. Or her, and I pray for my wife. Got the devil in here. God's gonna restore that. I did that. They getting worse. I pray for them old hard head kids, and I did all that they told me to do. And my kids getting worse. They they more rebellious. They going, and you can't give up at the sign of trouble. So now the the servant did what the prophet said, but there ain't no results. And so then when Elijah was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and he shut the door upon the, just the two of them. <laughs> Y'all can do it. Give me time with the Lord. It's going to be me and the child and God. And he shut the door. And then what did he do? The most crucial thing he prayed. And he prayed unto the Lord. Because the power was not just in him. The power worked through him. And so, and he prayed unto the Lord. And he went up. 
and laid upon the child, put his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child began to wax warm. So and when things are at death, they're cold, they're hard, and now this child showing signs of coming back to life. His, <clears throat> his, uh, his flesh is now warming up. Then he returned and walked into the house to and fro and went up. And so the process is, is, is in motion. So now the child is, is returning to life. And now he's walking to and fro. He went and stretched himself now again upon the child. And the child sneezed, what, seven times? And then the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call the Shudamite. So he called her. And when she was coming to him, he said, take up your son. Then she went in fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground, took up her son, and she went out. Received her miracle. She got into the right dr driving gear. She didn't slack up. She went to where the answer was, and she didn't let anybody stop her based off the fact. She let her mouth be aligned to what she was believing inside. If you change your belief, if you change your mouth, you can change your outcome. And so Pastor Betty is here to tell you it's time to shift gears. And the Lord said the faith word for Kingdom Life Christian Center and for its members and to all of those who will come on board, my partners and supporters and my colleagues or anyone who feel led to join in in this faith confession for 2021. What is a faith confession? Believing those things to be not as though they were. We speaking into the atmosphere, the confession and the answers that we want to be manifest on our behalf in this year. And that faith word he told me, it deals with the three R's. This is the year of recovery, restoration, and replenishment. Come on, say it. The year of recovery, restoration, and replenishment. And I'm going to go and talk about that in the first Sunday of the year. We're going to go into the series. That's why we are putting uh, shifting gears uh, on hold for right now because the Lord want me to teach you and to give you the insight and the content of this word, this faith word uh, for the new year. The people perish for the lack of knowledge and without a, a vision, the people perish. So if I set the vision for the house co uh, as, a, as a corporate body, if I set the vision uh, and the faith word that you feel that you would like to align, you don't have to align with it. This is just what the Holy Spirit gave me and if you feel led. And when you align to it, that means you're gonna be looking for the manifestation of that faith confession. You see what happened with the Shudamite woman with her confession, that she received the results that she needed because she put her mouth into alignment with the Word of God, although the facts were dictating to her something totally very different. And I know 2020 has been a strange year. It's been trying to dictate to you that this year is going to be a tough year. The world is not going to be the same anymore. Uh, the, the the normal that we know, it may be true that the normal is not here, but that don't mean that the normal was good anyway. And we have not been called to normal anyway. We've been called to rise above the norm, to uh, let the super be put on our natural so it becomes supernatural, to let the extra be put on our ordinary so we can do what is extraordinary. We will be tried, people of God. We're not going to just enter into this without a fight. But if you already know that you are one of the uh, um, the people that are prone to be attacked because of your true status as heavyweight champion in the boxing field, don't mean because you won that fight that you you're done. That means that as we continue to mature, as we continue to follow after Christ, as the time gets closer to the coming of our Lord and our Christ, the attack of the enemy is going to heighten. And I'm trying to prepare the people of God and get you strong now, to get your resolves right, to get you into the right mode of thinking and the right uh, uh, eyesight of who you are, who you are in Christ, and getting you ingrained and engulfed in the Word of God, seeing so your eyes can only see yourself and the situation through the lenses of the Word, that you can know the Word, and if you know the Word, if you know the truth, the truth is what makes you free. But if we don't know, we, be, we will become subjects on this roller coaster ride with the enemy, 
one season we're good, the next season some come, we, we moan and complain and we're in a defeated mindset again. It's time to get in the driving gear. I mean the driving mode, yeah, and that driving gear. Uh the the gear that we was designed to operate in and to stay there. And if by chance you get it to the reverse mode, only be reviewing, going backwards to review what you haven't reviewed that God wants you to. Don't come out of that backsliding state. And when you feel yourself, I'm not bringing condemnation, when you feel yourself backsliding on your conviction of faith, it's so many doing that today. It's sad. It's sad. I, I don't got time for that. But when you feel yourself backsliding, Holy Spirit will let you know. Backsliding off of the truth. Backsliding off of what you believe. Backsliding off of so because you you feel the, the brunt of stick sticking out like a sore thumb. You backsliding on the principles and oracles of God. He said that the time that you need to be teachers. Now one has a need to teach you again. Not the, the great stuff, but the very principles and the oracles of God that you're supposed to already have learned in kindergarten. Where you base your foundational truths there and you grew on it. Now... You, you're saying one plus one now don't equals two. That's what the enemy is doing. And if you make your resolve and you stay strong in the Lord, your outcome is great. And so I encourage you all to shift before the new year. So you're going to go right into the new year in the right mode. Driving, moving forward, saying it's going to be well. I'm not going to focus on facts. I'm going to focus on the truth of the word. I'm going to say what God says. I'm going to love what he loves. I'm going to and I'm going to hate what he hates. And I'm going to put myself in alignment to the word of God. And we're going to find ourselves more prosperous, more happy, and right in um, the will of God. For in the will of God, people of God, is the safest place in the whole wide world, being in his perfect will. And um, uh, we are excited. And so as we move forward into 2021, shift your tradition shift from your religion shift from all that stuff that the lord told him i don't have no no pleasure in all of the uh, your festivals and your methods and your mythology your rules your regulations your traditions that has nothing to do with me he told the scribes and the pharisees you have a, a strange way uh, of dealing uh, with of adhering to your traditions and your religion more than you do adhering to the word of God. We got people who've been stuck in tradition and religion for years and it's not biblically sound, but because they've been there in that parking gear of tradition, um, they've stayed stuck there thinking that that made them more holy than anyone else because of how much they keep the law, how much they don't do something or or stay away from something. That doesn't make you holy. It is being in alignment with the Lord, Word of God. Don't get caught up in all of that methods and religion because at the end of the day, he uh, it is going to be about those who have a pure heart uh, and, um, and lift not up their soul to vanity, who follow after God the obedience of Christ, who dedicate themselves to uh, their assignment and fulfilling their purpose and making Jesus Lord and serving and advancing the kingdom of God and winning the loss and stand true to the great commission as to us who have already been saved and that is to win the loss. Some have gotten to the point that they've parked so in a certain traditional zone like the Pharisees that they and the scribes that they have missed God. They have missed opportunities where they were supposed to be influential, transforming somebody's life, but they have been sheltered in their little environment. They've been sheltered in their way of thinking, saying that I'm holy. God's God's plan for man and the number that he said he is he has number is too great to think that only your little group is only one that's going to make it to heaven and i'm saying it's time for all of us to be honest with ourselves i don't care who taught it to you if it's wrong be be um humble enough as i said earlier in the broadcast to say god didn't say that i was wrong that if you want to do that that's what you want that's your conviction but if you got a conviction, I said that I think in another teaching, if you have a conviction, please you all make sure your conviction is biblically backed up by the word of God. 
because we got people that you're sending them in the wrong direction. Some of them don't know how to survive. They are rather give up than to hold to, to all of this stuff that is not even uh, uh, mentioned in the word, but it's because we set those things in motion and call it God's law. Okay, and then and we lose people that way. So let's just be sure and <clears throat> and and get stay studying this word as we have never had before. So that if at any point they come and say that we're getting ready now, where is it? I'm looking for it right now. We're getting ready. Uh, everything like this, this Bible, these pages, any any one we find, take them all and burn them. Uh, and anybody who's been caught with this would be illegal if they did that that you don't be all frantic because why the word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you it's in your reservoir it's in the deep of seat of your heart and in your spirit that nobody can take the word that you know and if um, you don't know the word abuse it is inevitable if you don't have the knowledge the reason we perish, the reason we put up with the things of the enemy, the reason we do certain things, because we, some of us just don't know. But it's no excuse. We can know. Let us all shift our paradigm, our model that we have had for years that have not been working, uh, that we've just been stuck in, the pattern of the way we even think. Some of us have patterns of thinking uh, that has been passed down through, through even our genetics. And we, that's why he says we got to come into agreement with the word of God. So I'm going to end with that. Thank you all for coming and joining Pastor Betty on this teaching. The, the faith word again for the 2021. This is the year for, for recovery, for restoration, and for replenishment. Come and join us on next Sunday as we go on to the first uh, uh, teaching. Um, um, is it the first? Yeah, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the year where we're going to be expounding a little bit on this series and then we'll move right back into shifting gears as the Holy Spirit leads us to do that. We know, we, we always used to say we hope this has been a blessing, but because of the word convicted me, said that if it was the word of God, you don't have to say we hope. We know that the word of God uh, has been uh, instrumental in somebody's life it has been a seed that has been planted, and we know according to Isaiah 55 and 11, so shall uh, it be my word that go forth out of my mouth. It shall go, <laughs> it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish. Say how it's going to accomplish. But that which I please, whatever the Lord please for his word to do, is going to accomplish it in your life. If you, re if you are humble enough to receive it from this little old vessel, uh, don't look at my gender. Don't look at what you think my age is. Glory be to God. I have a lot of people thinking I'm too young to be preaching this. Y'all don't know I'm a senior. Um, and what you're looking at is the grace of God. So don't get into that because if a child tells me something and it came from the Lord, I'm listening. Glory be to God because his vessels is just who he wants to use. And so uh, what if she had to say, I'm not going uh, to to perceive that that was a man of God. She would have lost her blessing. But anyway, he says, so shall my word be that going forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me, to me void, but it shall accomplish the thing which I please. And it shall. Come on, say it shall. She said it is well. And say it for the word, for yourself. And it shall uh, prosper in the thing that I sent it to. So whatever your need is, it's going to prosper wherever the word has sent it to do. Glory be to God. So whatever matter that you have before you, um, it is going to accomplish that thing. Glory be to God. And so I am appealing to those of you who do know not know Jesus, who have not made him part of your life. It's time for you to shift. It's time for you to shift out of that mundane life shift out of mediocrity, shift from uh, just going around that uh, proverbial hamster wheel making some traction but going nowhere. You've been stuck in that park zone, in that neutral zone. I don't believe in God and I don't, 
I believe I don't believe that God exists and neither do I believe he don't exist. So I'm in the middle. I'm an agnostic. So I don't believe any way or another. That's a dangerous place to be because by default, if you don't believe something, you do believe something. You don't believe you believe something, but you really do believe something because we can't live without a belief system. And so, but in other words, that you are struggling one way or another. You've been in the gear and it's time for you to shift. Your life has been on hold. You've been having some traction, but this ain't being the success. You are not fulfilling what God uh, intended for you to fulfill in this earth. The reason he formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you before then. And he, he drawn you to himself, made you for himself. And so now we are at, uh, compelling you, shit, for 2021. Don't go into the next year. It's been too many people. The earth almost have went through a sweep. There's been multiple good, good, good people as well as other people that has left this earth. And we know millions of people die uh, within a year, but the, the numbers was exponentially this year. You, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds out tomorrow. And we want to make sure that when your eyes close and leave this earth realm, you don't have to be worried of where you're going to go. There is only two places, people of God. Don't believe the philosophies and the lies and the heritage. Uh, heretic teaching that there is purgatory there's an in-between remember we talked about that neutral zone that ain't designed for nothing it's toilet there's no neutral zone in between heaven and hell no it's not that's a life of the pits of hell and he wants you to miss that and and know that there's only two places eternally with the Lord or eternally uh, uh, departed and separated from the Lord in hell there's hell in heaven, and I hate, we hate to say that word, but the word is true. We cannot keep re, uh, uh, um, um, ignoring it and not talking about it. Because if the people die and go, there ain't going to be on my hand. There is two places, heaven and hell. God did not know. You said, that what is a good God uh, doing creating hell? He did create hell for man. He created hell for the disobedient, angelic host, Lucifer, Satan, <clears throat> and all the third of demonic angels that came with him. That's what their place of abode was. It was not meant for you. And he does not send people to hell. Your choice of not accepting him sends you there. Your choice of saying, I will not accept him as Lord. I will not accept him as God. I don't even believe in him. Then you make your choice. And I'm saying, I'm appealing to you. So don't go into 2021 without knowing the Lord. Shift right now. God has a plan for you. He has a future and a hope and a bright outcome. Even, yes, during these difficult times. I showed to you that this widow woman, she didn't pay, pay attention to the facts. She had paid attention to the truth that comes through the word of God. And that you're looking at 2020, you're looking at things not making sense. You can't rationalize. If it's hard for Christians to deal with some of this, you, you don't have the ability or the power in you to decipher and to make good uh, rational decisions. And so if you get the Lord, He will help. The Holy Spirit that comes when you receive Christ will lead, teach, and guide you, comfort you, strengthen you. And if you want to be saved, you can simply say this prayer after me. We talked about confession. If you didn't listen to any, you starting right here, go back and read what we read about confession. A confession is made to salvation. So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that he is the only way back to the Father, you shall be saved. Simple. And with the mouth, confession is made us to salvation. And with the heart, man, believe unto repentance. That's the only two prerequisites to, to, to salvation. Believing in Jesus Christ, believing, and then uh, making your confession to receive. And if you're ready to do that, say this simple prayer to me. Dear Lord, here I am. You know me. You know my life. You know how I've lived. I repent of all of my sins and my wrongdoing. I want to shift my life and put it into the right direction and into the right gear. And that is driving uh, underneath your tutelage, underneath your rulership. I relinquish my control because I've taken control of my life and I've made a mess of my life. Lord, I want you. Lord, I see the need for you. And more importantly, Lord, I desire you to come in and be Lord of my life.
thank you, Lord, now by my confession of faith and my belief in you. I believe that and I know that I am now saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen and amen. You said that simple prayer. Oh, my goodness. You all think that Christmas was wonderful. Hallelujah. There is rejoicing right now in heaven because the Bible said there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repent more than 99 just persons that need no repentance. We have had our day celebration. Now, hallelujah, the celebration is focused on you. The announcement has been made. John, Susan, G uh, uh, Jane, um, Betsy, Mark, and whatever your name is, has given their life to the Lord. And boy, the angelic hosts are celebrating. Pastor Betty is celebrating. Hallelujah. And there is rejoicing in heaven. And now your name is being recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. No devil in heaven can take your name out. It's been written with, with uh, ink that cannot be erased. And this is the book that is being kept of all of those that is his. That he will have an account of all of those who is going to be gaining access into eternal life. Eternity with the Lord, eternal bliss, eternal joy, eternal peace. No more of this injustice, no more inequality, no more hatred, no more evil, no more strife, no more tears, no more sickness, no more death. Glory be to God. And the list go on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> That's enough. <coughs> Excuse me. For you to be excited about. I'm excited for you. I want to make a record of your visit. And a record of you receiving the Lord. So if you have received the Lord right here on this broadcast, would you do me a favor? Send us an email in the subject line. Say, received Christ. Give us your first name if you don't want to give us your full name. Your your location, what city you are in. I'm in California. I'm in Illinois. Wherever you are. We just want to keep our metrics of how inspirational and how effective we are being in winning souls to the kingdom. And then we want to be a conduit in the vehicle by which you can tap into to get you launched, to get you into the right place. Because now, this is the initial step. You're a newborn babe. You're on milk, but you got to grow up. You got to mature so that you can be able to eat meat of the Word of God. You got to be discipled. You got to be trained of what's the next step in this whole Christianity life. It's more to it than the initial salvation. So we want to give you that information. So reach out to us at our email at klcc. 1207 at yahoo.com said pastor betty give me the scenario i was a backslider i reclaimed my life i've never been saved i gave my life to the lord today or um i'm saved and, and but i'm not hooked to a church then we will be a conduit to help get you started because we want to plant you and and, and cover you so during the process of your growth and your roots getting stronger so that you can stand on your own how to stand in the word of God until your roots are strong enough to grab a hold to the dirt. And so when the storms of life and things come and the enemy try to come and pluck up what was planted right here, that you, your roots would be strong enough. But now you are a newborn babe. You need nurturing. You need to be incubated. Hallelujah. You need to be fed. You need to be discipled. And, it's, and the important part of being in that is getting connected to a local body. If you have a church, go back to your church. They're going to rejoice with you. They're going to give you the next step. But if you're a backslider, just a newborn believer, or you've been saving, you're not connected, we would love to have you. Pastor Betty have a place for you. And Kingdom Life is a great place. And if God is speaking to you about Kingdom Life, don't fight it. Because every person is destined to be under a certain shepherd. They hear their voice, and that's the voice you're supposed to follow. Don't mean you'll be with me forever, but during the time of the process of your growth, God has a place for every person. And so we want to be a conduit to get you planted in the right soil, because it is about being planted in the right soil. You don't want to go to an unbelieving church. You don't want to go to a church that is teaching um, uh, not sound doctrine that is, is weed infested that is built off of personalities and anything that is not the world. You want a word. You want to go to a church where Jesus Christ is center focus and the word of God is the highest authority and that man is put in this proper perspective. Honor is given where honor is due but your allegiance is to God at the end of the day. 
reach out to us and let us know. I want to be a member. I'm saved, backslider, or uh, um, just newly being saved, want to be part of Kingdom Life. Or if you don't, you can make that decision now or later. Then we still want to be instrumental in getting you hooked and planted in good soil. And we will reach out to those who we know are preaching the word and who have my heart and my passion to cover you and we will help launch you. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You remember I tell you that all the time and I so mean it. But the Lord God loves you so much more and more than any human love can come close to or even compare with. Come back here next Sunday right here on uh, Kingdom Life Online Church Connection YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the notification bell so that you can be notified of when our broadcasts are are up and live. And then also share this with others so that this word, you can help me spread our scope by sharing the word that is blessing you with somebody that you know they may not listen to you they may not uh, listen to you as being their family member but they may listen and edit for, for me share with them if they look at it fine if they don't nothing is lost and so sh help us share this subscribe to our channel come back here and if you want to be part of kingdom life or come underneath this umbrella and you are not located in the states or you are located overseas this is the first initial step becoming a member of kingdom life online church connection virtual church you could become a virtual member of kingdom life yes god has put this in place i'm taking advantage of it and because of the long distance it is not easy we have protocol and things in place and if you are willing to abide by that we are willing to accept you as a member of kingdom life christian center so reach out to us thank you to all of my um my uh supporters all of those who support this ministry all of my partners and all of the members pastor betty love you with the love of jesus and he loves you so much more you all be blessed and join us right back here on next sunday you all keep walking by faith and shift that gear and put your confession that no matter what you see no matter what you hear no matter what you experience you will not bring the word down to your circumstance but you will bring yourself up to the word and you will profess like the shooter my woman did it is well and it shall be well in 2021 you all be blessed this is pastor betty senior pastor in one of the greatest churches a transformational church a relevant church in the 20th century and I am a pastor who is teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. Our motto is we are loved by God. So what we're going to do, we're going to give some love away. You all be blessed. Love you in Jesus' matches and in his wonderful and majestic name. You will see all of our social media platforms. Hallelujah. You see them right now on the screen. Go ahead and, and follow us. And just so that you guys would know, Periscope is now uh, going to be... Uh, dismantle starting March 31st so we will be utilizing Periscope up into March but after that point I think they're moving to Twitter so if you go ahead and follow me on Twitter you will be able to then be connected still with our broadcast keep me in prayer as I keep you in prayer and we love you in Jesus' name good night everyone I mean good day everyone have a blessed one